All right, it's Hello Again Wednesday number 39. Hello Again Wednesday number 39, and I just got a few moments, so I know that I'm going to keep this uh, down to that shortness that I'm always trying to desire. What's up with prayer? I've done prayer in the past. You should always have it be, um, I think we should always have reminders of prayer. In fact, for the most part, I would say prayer is actually kind of everywhere. In the most difficult of times, uh, people pray. Oh, for a Hello again, Wednesday. I said that 39. I'm so glad you guys are with me this, this, in these few moments as, uh, I do talk about prayer. Okay. So, uh, be sure and comment, be sure and like, be sure and share. And, uh, uh especially with what I'm going to ask at the end of the segment, you know what, but I do believe prayers everywhere, uh, in the most difficult of times people are praying or they even ask someone to uh, pray uh, for them. And so there's mention of prayers in songs. And I know I did this in the past, um, especially the second one I'm going to do. But you know what? And every I think of prayer in a song, I'm sorry, kind of, but Bon Jovi pop, pops into my head with, uh, what is it? Living on a prayer. And for some people like Lauren, um, she will have that song pop in her head just like that. If you mention stuff like that, it pops in her head. Or the one that I had um, even did an opening bit thing on um, in the past was Tourniquet. Back in the 90s, a big Tourniquet fan. And that song was You Get What You Pray For. And so uh, there's prayer. Um, I almost want to do stats. You know, like how, how, how much prayer is in movies, TV, stuff like that. How, you know, or is it all diminished? I, I, I was almost going to get technical, but I'm not. Because if you click in click on uh, or do a search for prayer in movies. There are a ton of movies, even with prayer in the title, some good, some bad. And there's tons of movies with prayer in them that takes place in them. Um, some good, some bad. But uh, there's uh, prayer in TV programs. I know in one of my favorites, Everybody Loves Raymond, there was a lot of times they were sitting around the dining room table and they would have a time of prayer, especially the Thanksgiving episodes and stuff like that. Um, so there was prayer um, in TV. And, you know, if you're honest, sometimes these segments, both in movies and television, uh, were made to make you smile or make you even laugh a little bit. And I'm not trying to dismiss prayer or anything like that. I'm just saying in reality, that's what it was presented as. In fact, especially everybody loves Raymond. Hey, you know what? I did smile at some of those segments. Why is that? Because as it made me laugh, it also made me think of, you know, I think the writers of, of everybody loves Raymond were writing about some of the ways prayer life was in their home, you know, because they had church segments and stuff like that, along with the dining room, uh, dining, uh, dining time, dinner time, prayer segments. Um, they had it and it was what was what happening. And so it made you smile, made you laugh a little bit. Um, so the reason I'm doing prayer again is because I had this, this thought process. It popped in my mind a certain way. And sometimes I think the freakiest ways. So I'm going to do a thought process of when, uh, Jesus taught prayer. Okay. And so uh, bear with me. It kind of goes a little bit like this, the Lord's prayer. There's 12 guys. They're the disciples and they ask Jesus how to pray. And Jesus gives them the absolute best prayer. It's found in Matthew chapter six. If you ever want to go and look it up, please look it up. Okay. Um, cause you're going to have different translations and stuff like that. Uh, most of us know the King James version. And so of the quote Lord's prayer, but it's the prayer that Jesus taught. And so I just want to tell you a little bit how I'm coming up to what I'm thinking about. That prayer, what's it mean? How, or, or the thought process Jesus is telling his 12 guys. Yeah, you know what? Talk to God. See what God of heaven does on earth. Ask for things you absolutely need every day. Be forgiven and forgive the same. Stay away from what's wrong. Try to stay away from what's wrong. Don't be led into what is wrong. And if that ever happens, accept. accept the big rescue that is needed. And then uh, 
at the end of some versions as for the kingdom's power and glory forever. Amen. Okay. So, but what if the prayer time at dinner time? Okay, no. What if that prayer time that Jesus was teaching them or any other times where, you know, because Jesus sat and ate with them. What if a prayer time kind of went like some of the prayer times that go like at home today? So picture the scene. All right. Jesus, 12 guys getting ready to eat. Jesus is about to begin to pray or begins to pray. Well, well, because there's sections. Jesus is about to begin to pray, to pray. Okay. And what happens? I'm going to use some names like this. Are you ready? Uh, Jimmy or James is mad because Johnny or John won't hold his hand during prayer. Jesus begins to pray anyways. And all of a sudden you hear Andrew during the prayer yell out in pain. Why is that? Because Peter, the rock, (laughs) put a tight squeeze on his brother Andrew's hand. Why? Because it was funny. How about this? Matt or Matthew, who always did a jig dance when he was collecting the taxes around the table. He got a lot of money and it felt good, so he did a little jig dance. During prayer, he's in the middle of the circle dancing away during prayer. And then, of course, there's Tom or Thomas, who would rather just fold his arms. Why? Because he was doubting. (laughs) <laughs> now that was okay it's all for just a little smile yet i have to say this at some point in family history of my family history those things happen the jig dance the squeezing of the hand the not holding hands the you know and some of that not holding hands is folding arms why because i can't stand next to so and so that's how sometimes at home uh prayer life kind of was going on. In fact, just last night, (laughs) oh, we were, we were doing stuff and dinner wasn't going quite the way we were hoping. And so we were manipulating things. And so at one point in time, the kid, the grandkids and Michelle and them were eating, uh, uh, just a a touch earlier than us. We made sure that they had something because they didn't like what we were having, I think is what it was. And so we're about to get ready to pray. And uh, Boomer and Lauren, I and Connie are uh, in the kitchen and Connie is uh, dishing up her plate and uh, because she has this opportunity to get her food nice and hot. So as soon as we're done praying, she can sit down and eat. And Boomer's like, Mom, come on, let's say grace. And Connie's like, I'm getting my food first. And so at that moment, we're all laughing and she gets her food, sets it down. And so we... uh, begin to pray. And as soon as prayer was done, I go, guess what? That is going into a hello again segment that I have on prayer on what happens when it's really funny during prayer time sometimes. And here we are laughing. And that meant that we all began to laugh some more. Okay. Now a serious thought on prayer. Um, I told you about Matthew six. I said, look it up. I am going to read it. Uh, Go back, study it, look at it yourself, learn how, what does it, you know, Jesus you know, teaches to pray. In fact, those 12 guys, hey, how should we pray? And in Matthew 6, it goes like this. Jesus says, pray like this. And I'm going to use a a version that's not the King James Version, but look it up in the King James Version if you like. It says this, our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And Jesus gave everything you needed for a prayer. Look at all of it, and you can fit something in your day into that prayer. And so, you know what? Yeah, what a great teaching that Jesus gave us. So, here we are. Colossians also, I'm going to say this. Colossians 4, 2. Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. 
that's a good way to. There is so much more to talking about prayer. I'm not going to do it in this entire segment. In fact, I'm, I'm done. Ready? So here's the question. What's prayer like at your house? Have you ever sensed a joy to look over in any restaurant and see a family praying? Two questions, I guess it is. Okay. Hey, I am just minutes away. We're minutes away now. <laughs> we have Bible study here. I'm in my office now. I'm about to go downstairs in person. Bible study. Uh, uh, First Colossians. We're about to close out First Colossians and probably go into Second Colossians. And so we're doing it live in person. We're doing it in Zoom. And so uh, that's happening right now. Hey, check out a church near you and and maybe join in prayer and uh, have a good time with it uh, or a Bible study. Have a good time with it. Some of you have already for. A, yeah, no, you're probably getting ready to go in even in the Midwest, going into Bible study or even uh, further out going into a Bible study. Enjoy it. OK, uh, check it out. But I would love to see the comments. What's prayer like at your house? Are any of the things that I described, do any of those things happen to you during your prayer time? Um, hey, so I am so glad to have you with me. Hello again, Wednesday. Um, I will see you. I will see you. Let me see if I can get these things looking like next week. Thank you.